It's Jordan Drake here, and today I get to talk about my favorite thing on Earth. Is it cameras? No. Is it classic movies? No. It's Monopod! Now for most of my over a decade long YouTube career, if I'm filming the majority of the time, the camera is positioned on a monopod going from Manfrotto and now over to the iFootage system. I just find it's a great way for me to have a very quick setup, a small footprint when we're in a busy place. And if you find the center of gravity and go for a walk with it, you can use it as kind of a poor man's Steadicam. Now, a couple years ago, I purchased the iFootage Cobra 2 and fell in love immediately. I called it the greatest monopod in the history of ever. And if you want to see a detailed video really looking at that older version, uh, there's one hosted by like a tall, handsome dude talking about that monopod in detail. It's, um, yes, it's the video by Gerald Undone. So I really couldn't find any faults with the Cobra 2. And I was curious when iFootage sent the Cobra 3 over to me, What's changed and is this actually a better monopod? Let's find out. Okay, first thing, I would expect to see the Cobra 3 on wiki feet shortly because look at these beautiful feet that we've got on this. Especially when you compare it to the Cobra 2, you can see these are a whole lot wider and the advantage there is this is just more stable. Now I would use the Cobra 2 on occasion and like walk a couple feet away from it with a camera on it, but it was always a little bit precarious and pretty terrifying. Where with the Cobra 3, I can put even a big camera on it walk away and I know that it's not going to move unless I'm in like really heavy wind or a very uneven surface. Now in terms of the mono part of this monopod, one thing I really like is that they've kept very similar snap locks on it and these work great. It's a similar design to what we've seen on the Manfrotto monopods. The thing there is I found I was constantly retightening them where these maybe I'll tighten them up every like six months to a year and I'm using them almost every day. They're very solid and I love that I can tell at a glance if it's locked or unlocked unlike say some twist locks out there. The other thing that you can see is that it's actually quite a bit narrower than the older Cobra 2, which just makes it easier to get a grip on it. It also makes it a little bit lighter. Now they've also added a little notch here where you can attach a wrist strap to it, but I found the wrist strap just kept getting caught on so I actually don't have one attached. It's kind of a meaningless feature for me. One real limitation to monopods is you can only go so low with them. You can see this is the entire length of our center column. Can't get much smaller than that, or you couldn't with other monopods. One of my favorite features of the Cobra 2 and now with the Cobra 3 as well, is you could actually pull these columns out with a quick release. Come on. There we go. Drop them together. And there, you've got a nice little hi-hat that you can use for low angle shots. Now, in some ways, the stiffness on the Cobra 2 is a blessing. I've never had the monopod disassemble while I'm actually out shooting. But with the new Cobra 3, it's much easier to release it, as you can see right there. But this can be a real problem. I recently had a Nikon Z8 with an 85 millimeter F1.2 on it, went to grab the monopod pulled down here and the whole thing just fell right off the top. Thankfully the camera and lens were okay, but it's terrifying. But as long as you're not a dumb dumb like me and you actually disassemble it when you want to, you will find that it is far faster to put this monopod back together and take it apart. Now there's actually a few different configurations of the Cobra 3. Looking at this one here, it's very similar to what we saw in the Cobra 2. We've got a little hydrostatic ball at the bottom with a friction dial on it. And you can get this in aluminum or carbon fiber or aluminum with twist locks if you actually like those. But the really new and exciting thing is this pedal version. Okay, so how this pedal works, right now it's in the up or locked position and you can see it is very stable in that. I would certainly walk away from the camera as long as I'm on a flat surface. Now if we click this down, now it enters its loose mode and we can adjust that. We do actually have a fairly nice range of motion on it, but you can see even with this little friction wheel tightened all the way up, it's still not completely locked. So if I'm shooting on any kind of like off axes, rocks or lawn or anything like that, I'm not going to be able to actually lock it and walk away. But if we push that pedal down one more time, now it'll stay loose until we point it straight up it'll lock itself and now it is pointing perfectly straight and locked in that. So if I'm shooting on flat surfaces like a sidewalk or in a studio, this is definitely my preferred configuration because you're not always like down on your knees adjusting the settings like we do with a hydrostatic ball, but it does have some limitations. Ow, ow, okay. So now when we jump over to the kind of classic version here, 
I do have this little friction knob. I can release it, and I actually get a wider range of motion than what we see with the pedal version. And if I am shooting off axes, I can lock that down on the ball, and you can see it's not gonna move. So if I am on uneven terrain, this is the clear winner. The cool thing is you can actually get both sets of feet, and you can just interchange them based on your shooting location. So absolutely my favorite piece of filmmaking gear in the last several years was the iFootage Cobra 2. And I do think just having these wider feet that are quite a bit more stable makes the Cobra 3 well worth upgrading to. The question is just which model to get. For most general use, if I could only have one, I would take the carbon fiber with the locking hydrostatic ball, but there are certain situations where I was really missing the pedal. Back when I did the Cobra 2 review, I was really struggling to find a good head. I was using a Manfrotto MVM 500 and absolutely hated it. It was way too big. I didn't like the tilt control on it, but now I'm using the iFootage Komodo K5S, which is just a very compact video head, but it's got a much nicer tilt action than the older Manfrotto. It's much smaller and it's not a bad price at all. This is definitely the head I would recommend if you're looking at these monopods. If you even occasionally shoot video and you don't have a video monopod, it is absolutely the best way to work in my opinion. And my favorite options right now are the Cobra series from iFootage. Hopefully this helps you determine what would be the right one for you. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like follow us on our social media stuff that's down below. We'd love it if you would subscribe to the channel and we'll see you all again for more on Petapixel.